What is up everyone, this is Too Slow. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the difference between the 1MZ and the 3MZ power steering pump brackets. So for your typical 1MZ, um, this is your power steering pump brackets. You can see that the 3MZ has some sort of arch that the 1MZ bracket does not have. And why is that? Because this is where the tensioner for the power, for the power steering, for the timing belt tensioner would originally sit. So if you have this bracket, it would interfere with the tensioner. So you can't reuse the 1MZ power steering pump brackets on the 3MZ engine. And another bad side to it is you need to reuse the, the motor mount bracket, which is right here. Um, this is the one from a uh, Highlander. It's about the same thing as a Lexus ES330 and like pretty much all your other Toyotas or Lexus that have the 3MZ block. So I went ahead and I took it from the junkyard and because right here is where your tensioner bracket will originally sit. Or is it this one? No, right. It's um, oh, that one's for, for this one, for the for the idler bracket or the idler bracket for the tension tensioner bracket it would originally go like this and then this would go like right here or something like that i'll go ahead and show you guys once i get everything bolted up but my plan or my idea is to just cut right here all along right here because i'm not going to be using the mortar mount portion of the bracket i don't need it you don't really need it you have four mortar mounts holding the 3mz and s54 um transmission so we don't need this. We're going to go ahead and cut it. I will show you guys how I cut it. But basically, this is all the components for the 3MZ power steering pump bracket. You can see they're very similar. The 1MZ doesn't have the nuts welded on the bracket. This is a 3MZ one. It has the nuts welded onto the bracket. So you can see they're missing right there on the 1MZ bracket. And the 1MZ bracket looks just as similar to the 3mz you can see the mounting points are, are pretty close but they're quite quite um different from where they mount to the tensioner part so i ended up getting these from the junkyard you guys saw the previous episode from that i ended up getting it from a highlander so i already got my pressuring pump sitting outside of the celica so i'm gonna go ahead and reinstall that right now got it right here and that's where our bracket or pump would the bracket that big one would sit it would sit right here and we're gonna go ahead and bolt it up but there's my power steering pump it's still connected and i'm gonna go ahead and install that so that we can get our power steering pump belt installed and then we can get our accessory belt installed for the supercharger and maybe get this car running today Safety first guys, this isn't something to be playing around with when you're using power tools and cutting blades. So I already went ahead and cut them out. You guys can see right here, this is the portion. I'm gonna clean it up right now. I'm gonna make it um, flat and I'm gonna go ahead and, and spray some, some undercoating on it just so it kinda doesn't rust up there. And there you go, cut it. Um, I wasn't able to get that much. You can see how much I was able to grind off. And then the rest, I just started hitting on the floor and it broke off. Make sure to use the angle grinder. This is a Harbor Freight one. This thing's been reliable as hell, man. The Drillmaster angle grinder and their wheels, their cutoff wheels. Make sure you keep the guard on though, real talk. But this thing, I've had it for years, has not failed me for like the longest time. So we're gonna go back in here and clean this up. And we should be able to mount it up onto the car and get it going. So there you have it. Clean it up as best as I could. Don't have to be extremely perfect on it. But it seems like this is a beefy enough bracket to do the tensioner or the tension part of the power steering. Um, you can make it smaller. You can probably cut it off like let's say right here. But I think I, I want to keep it a bit beefier. And plus it, it doesn't really get in the way so um unless you're one of those guys oh weight weight di weight difference man got to cut down on weight like it, it's not really that heavy in the first place so i'm gonna keep it like this i'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of some undercoating just to kind of not let this expose and then we're gonna go ahead and install it on the engine and see how it looks 
So there you have it. Already went in ahead and installed the, the bracket. I only put these three on. I didn't really put this one on. I don't think it really matters. I mean, three should be good more than enough to hold the power steering pump bracket. So let's go ahead and finish installing the brackets on the 1MZ power steering pump and go from there. So we're gonna put this bracket, which has this angled out to go over the, the timing belt tensioner. And then the back bracket is going to be this one, which goes right behind it like this because it has the nuts on the other end holding the bolts that we're gonna feed in. This one's a holding one and these two are the ones we're gonna feed in to hold the other side of the bracket, if that makes sense. So you can see there's plenty of space right here if you don't have the axle installed. There's plenty of space right here to get to the bolts to hold the power steering pump bracket. You can see I got both brackets installed and they're going to go on this bracket right here. Let me turn it off. So this is the top bracket for the power steering pump. You can see there's already a bolt in here which is going to catch onto this thread over here and this one just slips through. Kind of gives you a general idea. And then this is going to sit above somewhere right here over the tensioner. You'll have an easier time getting to that top power steering bracket bolt from up here. So look at that, really easy to get to. You just gotta fish your socket into the, into the bolt. And look at that, it's already tight. Don't wanna over tighten it because then, you know, it might be hard to move next time or might break the bolt. So with that being said, our power steering pump is installed. So there you have it, power steering pump is installed. And now we have the ability to move this back and forth, hopefully. Let me go ahead and loosen this. And if you guys didn't follow my old videos with the 1MZ, it is a Gates Micro V-Belt. There's the part number for it. I'm gonna go ahead and slip it in the back portion of the crane pulley. So I don't know if the 1MZ belt is shorter than the 3MZ one, but I had a difficult time getting the 1MZ belt over the power steering pump to the crank. So what I did was I put the belt behind the crank, but I put it on the, on the power steering pump pulley all the way. So now I'm gonna turn it by hand or crank it by hand and it should the belt should slip right in and then we should be able to give the power steering pump tension. Feel like it has a good amount of tension. Doesn't want to turn all the way. Stops about halfway. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on the belt. See if the 1MZ and 3MZ belts are different. But the, as for the pumps, they're the same. So there you have it, guys. That's how you, I guess, retrofit a 3MZ or I guess a 1MZ power steering pump on a Celica. <laughs> but Pretty much that's about it. Um, 1MZ power steering pump converted to 3MZ. That's gonna be the title of the video. So there you guys have it. In case you guys are switching over to the 3MZ on your guys' Solara, Camry, whatever it is, you guys now have a video for it. And we've rotated it a couple of times. The belt does clear from everything. So we're good to go. The bracket looks sexy. So you guys saw from our previous videos, this AutoZone hose no kinks on it completely curved if i get a better angle but it's completely curved there's no kinks on it and then our high pressure hose same as well or same thing it's routed right here through the back that's also our return and our high pressure so the return goes right here and then into our reservoir so I did notice that my power steering fluid was getting a bit warm when I was running the 3 ms or the, the previous setup. So I might consider running a power steering oil cooler right here. Maybe get this line extended all the way out. So I'm probably gonna buy a new one, a longer one to get the line to come all the way over here. 
and the return, I guess, through there. Or I'll figure it out. I'll eventually figure it out. I'm pretty sure it's just um, this this hose coming over here into the cooler, out, and then back in. But I gotta figure out which one's the return or the, you know. But I'll eventually do that some other day. And, um, but for now, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching.